It has been one year since the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan upended the lives of so many Afghans. One year ago, the world was watching scenes like this. Afghans desperate to leave the country, chasing, hoping to get away from the Taliban takeover. The U.S. ended up evacuating more than 120,000 people from Afghanistan, including more than 76,000 Afghans who worked for the U.S. during their nearly 20-year conflict. It is believed another 78,000 were left behind. One of those who was lucky enough to get out, Hamid Wahidi, who helped U.S. forces in northern Afghanistan with information technology and Internet services. Hamid Wahidi joins us this morning. Hamid, thank you for being with us. First, how are you and your family doing right now? Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, we are doing good. Uh, life is going good here at the beginning. Uh, we have some sort of a strange feeling, but a couple of months after resettlement, uh, I made good and sweet American friends. So everything is fine now. It's, it's been some very difficult times for you, certainly for everyone in Afghanistan. What was it like for you and your family to, to get out of Afghanistan? How was that process? Well, it's very painful when you lose your country, your career, and your noble life and everything overnight. I received an email from an angel from another side of the planet. Uh, on the night of August 14, when Mazar Sharif uh, in northern Afghanistan was falling into the hands of Taliban, it was written, brother, do you want to talk? I said, yes. He was mad. I was very hop hopeful. Uh, I said, help me. My family life is in danger. Matt said, I can't promise that whatever I can do for you, I will try my best. I will help you. I said, I will try my best to go to Kabul. Will you help me? He said, yes, if you're in Kabul, I will help you. Uh, but Matt said, don't put your life in risk because of my words. I had made up my mind, and I said that I prefer to die like a man today, not, uh, not to disappear or to be killed in front of my kids tomorrow. I want to accept the big risk. I will start my journey and go to Kabul. Because I knew that they had access to biometrics, biometrics and access to different databases, and anything could happen at any moment, I had to accept this risk, which I did. And finally, I, on the evening of August 18, we left home, took only a backpack and headed to the bus station. Only five minutes had to pass when we were stopped at the checkpoint, the young boy fully armed, entered the, at the bath and asked every passenger, where are you going and what's your job? He was slowly approaching me. I was wearing burqa. My heart was beating so fast. I thought it was all over now. There was only one seat left to reach me. Oh my God. It was a miracle that someone shouted from outside and asked him to come out as soon as possible. Uh, maybe some, uh, someone else was trapped or something, but he got off the bus and we started again. Wow. During my trip, yeah, during my trip, I passed uh -huh. 10 checkpoints until I arrived in Kabul. Even I didn't sleep uh, I mean, all night. Yeah. L l l I'm sorry to, to, to interrupt. But the story is just so in incredible and intense by, by one seat. You know, you were essentially saved from being, from being killed. I'm just wondering, what did, did you in any of this journey get assistance from anybody, the consular services, from, from what was the American embassy, from, from consular, I mean, from the government of the United States that you have so, for so many years, helped uh, during your career in, in Afghanistan? Were you helped by anyone in the U.S. government at anything, any time? No, not. To get out? No, not, no, not at all. Uh, I applied for HIV on uh, August 2020. I was waiting for my come approval. When the uh, evacuation started, I was so scared. I emailed uh, to the HIV multiple times, but never, I didn't receive any reply from them. Uh, I was searching online to find someone to help me. 
finally, Matt sent me that email, and he helped me. He was the only one who helped me and uh, get me into the airport. I oh. didn't receive any kind of email, any kind of reply from anyone in, in the United States except Matt. Oh, well. Uh, Hamid, I, I am grateful for your time. I am grateful that you and your family are out starting a new life here in the United States. I wish you and your family all the best. I thank you for your time.